This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is giving me another Yu-Gi-Oh! discussion video on the, you know, competitive standpoint of the game, on a casual standpoint of the game, just the game in general, in terms of how it's currently, you know, sort of shaping up in the Link era of the game, uh, basically. There's something that I just wanted to talk about. I wanted to, you know, do sort of a podcasty type video. I don't think I'll be doing too many extensive edits in this in terms of just putting, you know, graphics and stuff on screen. I just really want to be, like, talking and basically just present some points, present an argument, and basically just try and see if we can spark some more conversation in the comment section like I've done on the previous couple of days of videos because I'm actually really liking the sort of, uh, you know, uh, the engagement that's going on there. But anyway, the purpose for today's video is a question that I want to present, a question that I wish to ask, and that is, are Link Monsters, is the Link mechanic itself too powerful for the game? And could it potentially be what ruins the game beyond repair, essentially? The mechanic is very interesting in terms of how it came into fruition, and already it's got so many just glaring, you know, abusable points to it when we're only two sets in to this three-year-long era of the game, which is going to be longer than three years if the game keeps going because they're not just going to stop making Link monsters and they're not just going to absolutely downright kill the mechanic. This mechanic is very interesting because when it was released, when it was spoiled to us back in February, People were losing their shit in rejoicing fashion, going, This is gonna be the savior of Yu-Gi-Oh! This is gonna slow down the game so much! But haha, that didn't end up being the case. We are literally three months into actual Link era, meaning that we've had two core sets released, and we've already had the, you know, at least fledgling results of a Tier 0 Link format deck, in the form of the Spiral Link deck because of the enableability that Double Helix gave Spirals to just spam out resources, as well as the Link mechanic itself being abusable with other resources that the Spiral deck currently had, you know, in it in the form of Master Plan, Quick Fix, and things of that nature. We're very, very early into Link era, but we've already had so much degeneracy based around the Link mechanic as its core that we've already had to have multiple hits on certain cards on the ban lists just to prevent FTKs from happening. Because we've already had multiple different forms of FTKs, and then with the newer cards being released and spoiled in Japan, there are already FTKs associated with those Link monsters. It's very interesting. Like, we had the Dino FTK with the Firewall Dragons and Grand Soil and all that sort of stuff. We have the Infernity FTK that Firewall Dragon again enables. And then with the new Kristron Link monster that is coming out, and with the new Aroma Link monster that is coming out, there are FTKs associated with those cards that those cards strictly enable because of how good they are. And even other cards, like the uh, the uh, the Burning Abyss Link monster being a pretty semi-generic Levolve All Chain type monster to get just a, a huge amount of resources if you play the certain cards built around it, and then the Lightshorn Link monster, again, being a less generic version of it, but more accessible in different decks. There's a lot of different things that are just sort of forming around the Link mechanic currently as we know it that's just promoting a lot of actual just speed, and not necessarily degeneracy in some cases, but the game is just speeding up at such a rapid pace. Like, the entire Link mechanic, which people thought were going to be the thing that slowed down the game, has actually just become the most generic Link, the most generic game mechanic that the game has in terms of extra deck summoning, which makes it the best method of extra deck summoning, and all of the cards that are currently being released and, you know, you know, spoiled for the Link monster pool are all really good and have really insanely good effects, which makes them problematic with how generic of cards that they are. The Link mechanic, I'm seeing a lot of problems with how Konami is handling the Link Mechanic's initial release that pretty much mirror the way that there was a lot of problems when Synchro Monsters became, you know, something in the game. Now, albeit during the Synchro Monster era when they were starting to print those, this was something that had never been done before, you know. Easy access into summoning monsters from your extra deck just by using two or more monsters on the field, 
albeit one has to be a tuner and the others have to be non-tuners, we still had problems with them making overly generic, powerful synchro monsters straight out of the gate. I mean, at one point we had four or five synchros on the ban list, physically banned, with other copies of them limited, semi-limited, and whatever. I mean, look at some of the early synchro monsters that are pre-errata, like Dark Strike Fighter, like Goyo Guardian, like Brianak, like Duloran Dragon of the Ice Barrier, which has yet to receive any form of errata, but it has never not been on the Forbidden and Limited list for the past five or six years, because it just, with Brianak and Duloran specifically, they just enabled so many FTKs and stuff. At one point, Trishula was on the ban list, because that was just a really good synchro monster as well. Being able to loop out three of it in a turn was game-breaking. And all of these synchros combined with the other things like Black Rose Dragon as well. Black Rose Dragon was insane for its time. They immediately limited that card because they were so afraid of what was going to occur in the format with people just being able to go Debris Dragon, blow up the field. you got to remember, this was a time frame in the game where we had so few ways to actually deal with entire boards like dark hole was still banned at this point i believe uh obviously raigeki was banned there was no like real massive presence of board wipes even cards like mirror force were still at one because of how powerful just a massive board wiping presence was and then black rose comes out and black rose is just like what's up i blow up the field all of these early Synchro Monsters were very generically powerful for what they were, and this became a problem. This became something that, you know, Konami has had to address over years of, you know, hitting the cards, limiting the cards, whatever. So you'd think that they would have learned from this when they were going to be moving forward into the Link mechanic, which is literally just the Synchro mechanic, but better because it does not require Tuner Monsters, and it is much more generic in terms of what accessibility pool you have. I didn't think we'd ever get a mechanic that was more generically good at doing what it did than Xyz monsters were, because Xyz, they, they're pretty generic in terms of how you can play them, especially like the basic bog standard rank 3s and rank 4 pool, but links are even more generic than that. You can just use any monsters as long as they fit the criteria. They don't have to have matching levels, they don't have to have anything. As long as they match, they're either an effect monster, normal monster, whatever type, whatever attribute, all that sort of stuff. There's very, very loose restrictions on the summoning mechanic and summoning method that Link monsters have in terms of what's required to summon them as of, you know, current. You know, the current card pool that we have to look at. And all of these new Link monsters, so many of them are just monsters that summon things from deck for free or send things from deck to grave for free. Firewall Dragon is an absurd motherfucker. I have no idea how that card was ever greenlit. Um, that card just screams that it needs to have something done to it uh, in terms of either an errata or like a limitation because having multiple firewall dragons is pretty unfair because of the fact that you can keep using one to loop cards and the other one can sit on the field letting you special summon cards from hand every time things leave. There's ultimately different things that just structure how, uh, how this is just becoming a really degenerate based mechanic already when we're not even that far out of the, you know, out of the starting line with this mechanic. I mean, we already have extra linking, which is already a degenerate part of the mechanic as well. Now, keep in mind, I'm not bitching. I love the link mechanic. I think it's one of the coolest things that's happened to this game in a long time, because I also love the synchro mechanic. I didn't really like the Xyz mechanic that much, but I respected why it was good. And, you know, it was just, it's something that you can look at and be like, okay, I could see why this was the next evolution. The pendulum mechanic was... Eh, had his good and bad times. The Link mechanic, I am actually, like, really excited to play. One, because the cards are beautiful, and two, because the mechanic itself makes a lot of technical play structuring very important, and that's something that I like. I like the fact that this game is becoming more and more like chess in terms of things becoming very important, what move you make where and what card you place in what position. However, all of these Link monsters that are currently coming out are incredibly powerful for how generic they are. And that's actually something that could lead the game to a ruinous state if Konami's not careful. I mean, like, I, like I've already said, the Crystron Link monster, that card's a lone fire blossom for literally tuners. And there are so many good tuners in the game that you can enable so much extensive combo structuring around just that one card, which can be summoned off of one card. 
Same thing with the uh, Roma Seraphi Jasmine. That card literally has an FTK built around it already. Firewall Dragon has had two FTKs in the TCG and is a very heavy component of the Spiral deck and stuff like that. As well as the fact that we're getting more powerful Link monsters coming out in November, early November, with the form of in the form of Trigate Wizard. Let's just add a Cyber Dragon Infinity into the Link monster pool. Now, Trigate Wizard is what I would consider one of the more fair Link monsters because it physically has to be co-linked with three cards to negate a card. It's very generic of a card, but you have to have tons of setup for it to get its best effect. That's something that I'd like to see in the rest of the Link monsters because that's something that you saw in a lot of the earliest Xyz monsters that made that mechanic a lot more balanced in the earlier aspects of it than the Synchro mechanic was. The Synchro mechanic, they came out straight out of the gate with all these powerful ass cards that you could summon from the extra deck for very little actual effort considering that they were pushing tuners out the door, they were trying to push the Scenic Room mechanic onto people to use it. But then you have uh, the Seas mechanic where it's like they learned from their mistakes of putting so many powerful cards at the forefront of the Synchro era, and you had these, you know, Xyz monsters that were coming out that were like My Stroke, Lagia and Dolka that are dinosaur specific. Uh, you didn't really get any degenerate Xyz monsters, any truly degenerate Xyz monsters, until we got into like the wind-up loop area, but even then that was arguably not that degenerate. The most degeneracy we saw from the Xyz era was really things like, you know, Exciton Knight blowing up the field, which was still easily counterable and it was a very fair effect for the time, and then the very last section that we have to look at, which is the Zodiac Xyz pool, which that was the only time when I felt like they truly broke the Xyz mechanic with two overly good generic cards because it was just way too easily to like play the deck as its own thing or splash it in other decks and basically one card Xyz summons were never okay. Now, we never really had any sort of just straight up like Konami's just like pushing out these super 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 powerful Xyz monsters during the Xyz era. And the Pendulum era was always destined to be a clusterfuck at some point. I don't really blame Konami for full power Pepe happening because they, even at the beginning of the Pendulum era, they were very careful with their Pendulum monsters. I mean, consider this. The first playable Pendulum deck that we had was fucking Clayforts. Like, that's not a comparison of the brokenness that is a Pendulum deck. You don't think about Cleeforts. They put so many restrictions on so many Pendulum decks in terms of the scales, like Deskbots have a restriction in their scales where you can only Pendulum Deskbots, Cleeforts have the same thing where you can only special summon Cleeforts at any point as long as you have a scale up. Uh, there was just, it was always destined to be a problem when you got enough good Pendulum cards together and that, you know, presented itself in the form of Full Power Pepe. And it was, you know, rather quickly dealt with in the TCG. Not so much in the OCG, they had it for a little while, but it was it was dealt with nonetheless. That one was a destined clusterfuck to happen. There's no way that you could look at the Pendulum mechanic and not think that at some point, this was going to be the most broken thing in the game, bar none. But, they addressed that, and they've sort of addressed it even further with, you know, Master Rule 4, which implemented the Link Summoning mechanic. The issue is, Link Summoning, for the time that they've been out have been insane. These cards have been absolutely just monstrosities. They've been absolute monstrosities in the metagame in terms of what they have done. Remember, six months ago, we were all bitching about Dimensional Barrier. Now people aren't even running it because nothing that summons anything that isn't Link Monsters from the extra deck is good. Like nothing that tries to summon things that aren't Link Monsters as a, you know, as its main focus, none of those strategies are good. Dimensional Barrier went from being the most played and most bitched about card in the game because it negates every summoning mechanic other than normal summoning and setting, to nobody plays it because nobody's running those cards because links are just inherently so much better. Like, Firewall Dragon's insane, all of these cards are insane, and again, I'm not bitching, I think that it's hilarious. If anything, I want to know your guys' opinions on this if you think that I'm over, you know, over embellishing this a bit. But in terms of how long Links have been out, which if we want to give it the most time possible, it was July 21st when the Structure Deck came out and we went into Master Rule 4. However, we did not get any core good Link monsters to enable 
Link based strategies in their entirety to exist until Code of the Duelist. So we've been in Link era from Code of the Duelist till now, just about three months. We've already had a arguably tier zero deck that is purely facilitated because of Link Summoning and the support that Link Summoning gave the deck to be able to do its shenanigans because of how generically good it is. It's one of the most generic mechanics this game has outside of just normal summoning or setting a monster. It's so non-specific. It's brilliant. It was brilliant in its design, but Konami is giving these cards such good fucking effects that it, it it's very quickly starting to ha spiral out of control, essentially. Uh, it's very quickly starting to become a problem on the game because if you're not playing Link Monsters in some capacity, if your deck doesn't have the ability to put out, like, Firewall Dragon or whatever, or if your deck just, you know, your deck either has to be a, car a deck, like, Invoked or something that doesn't care about putting out one monster at a time and having that monster, monster be super powerful, or you have to play a deck that spams Links to get to its boss monsters, which the current forms of those decks are either World Chalice or Spiral, and nothing really else is good enough. You have decks like ABCs that can put out ABC Dragon Buster, again, one card boss monster that can just take up one zone. You have a couple of small Link shenanigans that go on there. Uh, but like basically your deck has to either be very, very streamlined at doing one specific action, putting out a very select few uh, you know, varieties of boss monsters that can easily be rotated around to your advantage, or you have to play a Link deck. And with how generically good these Link monsters are, it's becoming easier and easier to do so. And it's going to continue to be easier and easier to do so, at least until we get the Link Vrains pack. Because, as of right now, we don't even know what future Link monsters are going to give us, but we know what's in the Link Vrains pack. And the Crystron monster, the Aroma monster, the Light Sworn monster, the Burning Abyss monster, they're all broken, whether they're in their own decks or not. <laughs> and that's something that can be very, very bad for the game's health and longevity, because... As the game continues to speed up, the power creep gets more and more ridiculous. Like, we all thought Link Monsters would slow down the game when the mechanic was revealed. And instead it has turned into arguably one of its most enabled forms of power creep that we've seen over the past couple of years. Like, at least power creep over the past like year and a half of the game before Link's was, you know, a steady progression up. It was a fast progression up. But it was a steady progression up from, you know, Blue Eyes to Metal Foes to uh, BAPK to ABC to Paleo to Zoo to Zoo to Zoo Noids uh, and Grass decks, uh, the Grass uh, Paleo decks and stuff like that. It was a it was a solid progression up until we got to the Zoo and the True Draco area. It was a fast progression, but it was a nice even progression. Every deck was obviously better than the one before it because of small reasons but those small reasons mattered a lot but now in link format with the number of just generically good link monsters we have holy hell <laughs> the power creep literally is like firewall dragon <laughs> it's absolutely like ridiculous when you think that over the last month we were playing magician pendulum mirrors <laughs> with sometimes no Link monsters in them, and we were playing ABC and ABC Draco. But now, as soon as Circuit Break is released, the just true, like, the true, like, abusability of the Link mechanic comes to its full, you know, forefront in the game, only this time it spirals using it. The next day there will be another deck that uses it, and so on and so forth, as long as these good Link monsters keep getting announced and released. Today it'll be spirals, tomorrow it'll be something else, but it's going to be something that abuses the Link mechanic. And considering where we've been for the past month, and then now, with Spiral Double Helix's release to, you know, tie in spirals to be the Link abusing deck of the month, like, this should be some red flags to some people. <laughs> that this Link mechanic is one hell of a motherfucker if we let it continue to go unchecked, and if Konami lets it to continue to go unchecked, because of how good so many of the cards that we know we're getting are. I I just don't know. I think that this mechanic could be the thing that if handled incorrectly from here on out, could be the thing that causes either just a huge amount of cards to go on the Forbidden Limited list, because Firewall has already gotten a handful of cards uh, put on the Forbidden Limited list. 
because of FTKs and stuff like that. And I don't know how long Firewall can get away with, you know, being at 3 and Konami hitting cards around it. That might be a topic for a different video. But, regardless, I want to know what you guys' thoughts are in the comments down below on this. Do you think that the Link mechanic is way too powerful for the game? I think it's a very cool mechanic, and I really like its design. I'm not bitching about it. I want to re-emphasize this. I'm not bitching about the mechanic. I love the mechanic. Its design was so, so good and so well thought out for how to make this game more complex and more interactive, but the Link Monsters effects that are being released are literally just downplaying that aspect of the mechanic because they're all so fucking good. But anyway, like I said, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and let's get some discussions going because I'd like to know your opinions, if you, if you agree with anything I've said, if you disagree with points, all that sort of stuff, let me know in the comments section down below. But other than that, as always guys, Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links as always are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page, as well as my personal Patreon page. If you like the videos I've been making as of lately and want to support my ability to continue making them, then Patreon is the best way to do so. As well as if you're interested in getting access to my private Discord server, or being a bunch of other people chat on a daily basis, or if you're interested in monthly giveaways for Yu-Gi-Oh! product, then definitely go check out the Patreon reward tiers over on that link in the description, as I've already said. And any support you'd like to give the channel or myself, you'd have my thanks in advance for, because it helps out a ton, as I've said many times in the past, and will continue to say. But anyway, as I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video. But anyway, now that the video's over, I'd like to give a special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, and Eric Gertson, as well as everybody else that's currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a lot more than you may know. You have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support.